considering that healthcare and the general world has been taking some knocks and some kicks over the last decade or so, what does leading or leadership mean in the context of the times that we live in now? Well, um, I think that everybody could be a leader, mm. and that's very important. Being here, where we discuss healthcare, the future of healthcare, it's very uh, important that we take into account that everybody who's here can actually make a difference, mm -hmm. and we can take the next step or a step forward to making everything better. So, so we really want to talk about leading and not as much uh, leadership because you can, we can all be leaders. So, so I, I'm, I'm going to kind of ask, what's the distinction between being a leader and leading? Um, because I think for some people out there, it might be kind of a bit difficult to kind of see the difference. We don't want to play semantics. We, we talk about leading rather than leadership because leading is a, a verb, it's an action. Um, and leadership is a thing. And we think, as Inga said, everyone has the potential to be a leader. As a minimum, they're leading themselves. And so we don't want to confine people's view about who this is relevant to, to people who have a particular badge or title or role. Um, move away from the trophies and move into the doing. So who are the doers in this, this leading um is it just people who work in healthcare? Is it politicians? Is it you and me? Well, I'm different because I don't work in healthcare. But who is it? Well, there's a very important constituency that is very present here ever more each year. Um, and we've really tried to build that systematically into the leading work here, which is the patients and their families and the people who are caring for them. So you often talk about <clears throat> your uh, a participant or a leader by lived experience. That's what we're talking about. So in other industries, they might talk about putting the customer in the room. For us, it's even more than that. It's about getting those voices, those perspectives, right into the design of what we call the care system um, so that you put the professional expertise together with that perspective and good things come from it. Yeah, and, and what is also important is that we have uh, engaged the next generation. It's really important that we have the young people uh, on board and that they are helping us form the, the healthcare system of, of tomorrow because they're the ones who are going to work there, not all the people with grey hair. So we, we really need to have everybody on board and that's uh, what we... We're trying to, to invite uh, curiosity and an engagement into leading uh, healthcare. And we, just to add to that, we've come just now from um, a, a session that was built for chief executives and other senior leaders. And they've spent a chunk of this afternoon listening to younger leaders talking about what matters to them and how they think that they could contribute more usefully to this very complex task that we all have about trying to make health and care systems better and <clears throat> we're in London and the chief of the NHS in London uh, someone called Caroline Clark invited them to become part of the conversations and the meetings that she has planning how to improve health in London yeah so we have already ma made an impact we think so, so was that was that a breath of a breath of fresh air or was it the same old conversations well, um, I could hear a pin hit the ground. So it, it was, people were really listening. And I think it was kind of a wake up call that we really have to listen to those who work in healthcare and especially the young uh, people because we are all like, oh, uh, when I uh, came into work, it was much harder and you just have to get used to it. And so. We can't afford that. It's it's not it's it's not a way to humanize the the healthcare, and we have to do that. So we really have to listen to everybody, but especially uh, the next generation. It kind of strikes me that there's kind of a lot of ways that people might feel inspired to to lead in their own lives, in their communities, in their organisations. 
but it also feels to me like there's maybe lots of very obvious slaps in the face and like feet that trip you up on the way to that. How do we make sure that people who do have a vision to make something happen, to help other people make something happen, how do we make sure that they don't turn into people who are very cynical, who've been pushed away one too many times, not been listened to, um, or have tried things that have just gone calamitously wrong? <laughs> right. So two, two things. This morning I was in a, a session that was being run by NHS Horizons and uh, an outfit called the New Citizenship Foundation. Um, and in brief, it's an all, all-day session, just wrapping up about now, I expect, but it was talking about a shift where um, people in society, in the UK at least, have felt themselves for much of the last centuries to be subjects. So they receive quite passively, they're, they're done unto, um, and then uh, an era of consumers for the last few decades. And what they were suggesting is that we're moving into the, issue, the, the area of citizenship. And that comes both ways in brief, from the invitations from structures of power, <clears throat> which is composed of individuals ultimately, to create that invitation to participate, as we were saying earlier with the carers and, and families and patients themselves, but also from the citizens to say it's in some ways easy to be passive, to be told what to do, you know, stay at home, <laughs> lockdown, uh, to echo a few years ago. It's more difficult, but it's ultimately much more rewarding and you get better services if you co-produce them as citizens. So that's one thing. Yeah. And then another thing I would say, again, a theme of this program is about learning to fail well. Uh, and Amy Edmondson from Harvard is coming to talk about what she's learned through research about the useful type of failure, which, as I understand it, in brief, is failure that creates learning, which is at the heart of improvement. You try something on a hunch, it probably won't work as you intended, but you get useful information to do better next time. So keep on failing enthusiastically and more in intelligently. Yes, and, and I think we are all improvers in a way, and, and uh, we, can, uh, we can lose track at times, but uh, re-energizing at, at an event like this, meeting up, uh, seeing that there are uh, solutions out there that we could adopt, and maybe we can even go back and do something by tomorrow or next week. Mm -hmm. Just a little thing to make uh, a difference, uh, and I, I think that really uh, is what all this re-energizing is about. I think that's, I mean, everyone who comes here, nearly everyone who comes here has many, many more colleagues back mm. at their ranch who aren't here. And I think that's a really important point for me. You know, how can everybody take something which is relevant to the daily work that people do so that it's not simply re-energizing, important though that is, but it's also playing into how everyday works in the workplaces that we all have. I, I think that's, I mean, that's really interesting because the kind of subheading of this, this year's conference is, I think, regenerating healthcare together. And, and you kind of talked about being energized and stuff like that. I think what I want to ask you to kind of finish off is what your message would be to anyone who was really, really, really feeling hoofed in the face by the last four years, the last 10 years, people who've lived with things for a long time, worked in organizations for a long time, they've tried to be you know, in a position of leading a change, they have not been successful, people who are completely outside of the structures we have. Um, what would you say to those people about the, like, is it, is it a special personal quality? Is it a spark? Is it something magical? Like, what is it that keeps you going making change? Oh, uh, I mean, what a big, big question. I was, yeah, sorry, it's I would, I, 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 so I would say in brief, um, the safety in numbers. So you come to a place like this and you find hundreds, probably thousands of other people, all of whom are trying to do difficult stuff, struggling to do it, do the best they can. So, um, you know, a problem shared is a problem halved. Um, but also maybe this is what regenerate means. 
it's don't build back what we had only let's build better more inclusive with the patients absolutely there at the center young voices involved getting to a new level rather than just rebuilding what was before because four years five years ago I don't think we came and thought everything was working perfectly no and, and it, it and it won't solve what what we are facing so so what we uh, what we have to do when when we are feeling down and out it's it's uh, coming back to those communities and and that you're not in this alone and that's yeah. back to to where uh, we started that leading is not it's it's not the the hero it's not uh, Superman, Superwoman, it's it's uh, it's a togetherness, and it's actually something we have to do in teams. Well, I'd just like to say I have absolutely loved being together with you for this conversation, and um, I'll say thank you for that. Thank you.